Hey there, CPO here, and I owe you guys a video on the 680 Hexacopter. Um, I've got a bunch of videos in the hopper to do the finish of the build, but I'm easily distracted. I have a lot going on. Uh, you might have seen some other videos I posted, uh, you know, flying and building the Sensei with my son and the new uh, Twisted Hobbies 3D EPP that I've been playing with. I got to get the 500 uh, tested and finished built. I just got my 550 back in the air. Uh, I just have a lot going on. So it's built, it's ready, it's flown, but I owe you guys video. And uh, hopefully this will help appease uh, those of you who are looking for more information right now. And that is, I'm going to give you the highlights of my build uh, and uh, show you at least some of the tips that I ran across and how I mounted my flight controller, which seems to be the most popular question I get is how I mounted the Pixhawk. So I want to show that. And uh, I'm not 100% done buttoning everything down. It's still in the same state it was whenever I did my test fit to go do test flights. So I wanna elevate my GPS uh, eventually and uh, tidy up all the wiring. But for now, here's a quick look at how it is right now and how I got at least to where I am. All right, so here it is um, in all its glory. And uh, there are a couple things that I wanna show you that I am, uh, you know, trying to answer some of your questions on. So first of all, um, I have everything mounted uh, to the top with double stick 3M tape. Uh, the speaker here is going to stay. The receiver uh, is probably going to stay. And I may even leave the antennas hanging out. I just taped them. This is pretty ghetto, right? I just put black tape on here uh, just to get them in place. But it's, you know, working out kind of well. And I've got some diversity there, which is what I was going for. So I may leave that there. I may actually move this. Uh, over to this stationary uh, boom, but at any rate, I'm probably going to leave my receiver there. This is the BEC I have uh, providing power uh, from the um, the main battery. So the main battery has uh, two pigtails coming off of it, uh, in addition to the uh, the main harness for the uh, ESCs. So in the two pigtails, one of them is going to this uh, BEC, it's a five amp BEC, which is uh, powering the Pixhawk, which is then also powering the receiver. So all of this is off of this BEC. And I've used these Hobbywing BECs before. Um, I've used them in my tricopter build. And uh, you know, I don't know if everybody likes them or not, but I've had a lot of good luck with it. So I'm just gonna keep using it. It's been working out fine. So I have it um, plugged in and it is running into uh, channel, looks like eight here. Uh, it's a hexacopter, so I'm only using six motors. So channel eight is where it's putting its power in. And then the uh, RCN, which says RC on the Pixhawk, is going to the S bus in my receiver. I'm running in S bus mode. So interestingly enough, even though it's there's an S bus, uh, port, you don't actually put it in SBUS, you put it in RCN when you're doing SBUS. So I haven't quite figured that out yet, but that's how it works. So power goes in to the Pixhawk, powers, well, there's no other things to power other than the receiver, and it uh, does that through SBUS. So that's how that's working. Remember, uh, I'm using a uh, autopilot 180 amp uh, for the current voltage monitoring, and I'm not using power. These two, uh, I think it's these two are... I think, yeah, these two uh, would be for power if I was gonna do that, but I'm not doing that right now. I may do that later, I'm not sure. Uh, and then of course, I have my uh, arming switch light just black taped on. So um, I'll probably drill a hole and then mount it, uh, you know, press fit it in the hole to have a, a little button. But for now, this works for testing. The uh, compass GPS is right now hard mounted just to this but I'm building a little uh, deal to raise it. I know you can buy those. I'm just building one out of uh, some simple materials I had laying around. So I'll probably raise that up. But so far, to be honest with you, it's been working great right where it's at. I have not I have not had any signal issues or anything, but I know the best practice is to get it raised uh, above the prop level. So I'm gonna try and do that. Let's see, what else here? Uh, my gimbal for my camera, it's a Taro, uh, what, T2D? And I don't yet have it completely wired in. Uh, I've got to still wire in the uh, roll and uh, yaw uh, connections, these guys here. 
But let me show you what I do have going on here and how I'm getting power to it. This is uh, still a temporary job. I haven't finished uh, tidying all this up. So I hope you understand that and can bear with me on this. Uh, I just put some black tape to keep everything protected for my test flight. So this is a temporary uh, rig right now, but it is giving me power to my gimbal. Uh, and I will probably hardwire these on. But basically what I have here is a 12 volt regulator. So the gimbal can only take 12 volts. Uh, I'm running uh, 3S, which is what, 14 uh, volts, 14.7, whatever it is. I don't know the math right now, I can't think, but it's more than 12. So this is the uh, positive from the battery, the negative from the battery. So it's coming in at full voltage, and then it's leaving at a regulated 12 volt through this uh, you know, negative and ground. And I have all the grounds connected together to uh, join them for a common ground. So lot voltage in, 12 volts out, which gives me regulated 12 volt to my gimbal. So uh, like I said, this isn't tidied up yet. Uh, but I found that uh, I could just slip these uh, little connectors on there and it gives me a quick way to rig it up, primarily for testing, uh, and then I'll make it a more permanent solution uh, when I'm ready to close up the build. Uh, so that's how I'm powering the gimbal. Uh, I do have another thing for you here, which is how my PixHawk is mounted. Uh, I thought this was kind of an ingenious way to do it. Uh, I haven't seen anybody else do this, but uh, it was a way that made sense to me. Uh, and basically, I'll pull this apart for you. I have a couple things going on here. Oh my gosh. I hope I can do it without breaking it. Oh, there we go. All right, so uh, I want you to see this. This is a piece of plexiglass. I uh, got it at the uh, local like hardware store for five bucks or whatever. It's what you'd use to you know replace a window in your garage door or uh, you know in a picture frame or something. So it's just a thin piece of plexiglass, and it is double. It is cut to fit between these screws. These four screws. There's four of them. Uh, you know, and uh, it's fit to fit between there and be a little bit narrower than the Pixhawk, and it gives me room to get wires around. And then basically it's double stick taped to the top of the frame. And then that allows all my wires down here to be just covered up. And then the Pixhawk is attached to the plexiglass with four pieces of like the gyro foam. This foam came with the Pixhawk, but any normal thick gyro foam would work. So uh, then that whole contraption is pushed down. So you can see here how my Pixhawk is uh, isolated from vibration. It's got a pretty solid mount uh, and it works out really well. It allows me to get my wires all hid. Uh, you know, they can all come around from the side. I've got plenty of room there. Uh, and I've got all my wires coming around here off the back for the motors. You will notice I have uh, some tape here. This isn't black tape. I actually have some stuff that's designed to uh, to protect the wiring by wrapping over carbon frame edges and stuff. So that's fully wrapped around so the wires uh, have some protection there so they're not chafing right there. Uh, but you can see the other side of that uh, plexiglass. But it uh, it gives the Pixhawk some, uh, some breathing room from vibration, uh, puts it exactly center of mass and uh, worked well. So I'm exactly gonna leave it like that. I really like the way that turned out. Uh, let's see, what else? So this may be hard to see on uh, all the motor arms, but um, whenever I uh, leveled my motors, which uh, I used a uh, gauge, I used my Soko Heli Tools uh, Soko gauge uh, to basically, let me show you here, I would, uh, it's kind of hard because that's where the receiver is now, but I would pick a flat spot uh, right next to where the boom uh, mounts to the multi-rotor and then get the, uh, you know, basically the offset of the level from there. So if it's 0.03, then I'd come over here and use the flat part of the motor mount and get it at 0.03 as well and then tighten it down. And basically each motor is flat to the top of the uh, the multi-rotor body.
Uh, there's a lot of interesting me methods for doing this, but this worked for me and gets it as close, I think, as I need to worry about. Um, you can see here, as I tighten them down, I don't even know if you can see here, uh, I ended up using tape uh, to uh, wrap the booms to, uh, to lock these in. It's an old uh, helicopter trick, but basically you wrap the carbon fiber with uh, just regular scotch tape, a couple of wraps or so, and then tighten it down and it should keep it from rotating. Uh, a lot of people are having problems with their motor mounts rotating. I haven't had any problems with mine yet, but all of my uh, mounts have tapes on the boom. Some of them you can see it better than others. Uh, the good news is whenever I soldered on my wiring, uh, I left a little bit of room so I could pull the motor mounts back some, which would allow me to wrap some tape and then push the motor mounts on. So. If I was thinking about that in advance, I would have done it before I wired everything up, but I wasn't thinking about it. So that's why some of the tape is sticking out more than others, because that's about as far as I could pull the motor mount off because it was already wired in to get it tightened down. Uh, so that's that. Um, I do have uh, props balanced. Uh, you know, I'm using uh, tape to, uh, to weight the blades as, as I, best I can, and I'm using hot glue uh, for all of the uh, hubs. So if you haven't seen my video on balancing uh, props. I balance hubs as well as blades uh, and that gives me uh, low vibration. So all of my hubs are balanced. All of them required some sort of a balance except for one and then all of them required some sort of tape uh, to get the blades uh, level. But you can search Google, uh, YouTube for uh, CPO balancing props, uh, something like that and you can find that video if you need to. Uh, what else? Oh, I also, where the boom goes into the frame, use tape there as well just to uh, to lock that in so every place that there's some clamping on the boom in here uh, you know in this inside part here and here I have tape uh, wrapped around not even double stick tape just regular scotch tape although I was thinking about using double stick tape I just didn't do it whenever I didn't have any handy when I did it so uh, this works just fine uh, what else I think that's all of the highlights from the build that I need to catch you up on. Um, oh, there is one thing. I did a, I did a video, um, already, already posted it, on getting the landing gear uh, set up. And I neglected to talk about this, and somebody reminded me, and I, I wish I remember who now. Uh, I apologize, um, whoever you are. I just, uh, I'm not in front of my computer. But there is something I neglected to talk about, and is that this little knob here, that uh, is on the mount for the, uh, the, the uh, I guess this would be the vertical landing gear leg, needs to be facing out. One side has this little knob above the T and one side doesn't. And that's so that when you uh, clamp this shut, it has something to click into. So that's what that little knob is for. So make sure that's on the outside when you do your landing gear. Um, I didn't actually explicitly mention that. I did build it right, I just forgot to tell you how to build it right. Sometimes I do that. Uh, the other thing is, a lot of people are having problems with broken legs, and I am guilty of the same problem. Uh, I broke this one. Uh, not even sure how I broke it, actually. I took off. Uh, I have it on video. It's really weird. I took off, and the leg was there, and when I landed, the leg was gone. Never saw it fall off. I don't even see it fly off in the video, but I went and I found uh, my my piece in the uh, in the yard. So it uh, I must have had a harder landing at one point and tweaked it and then it just finally fell off later on. So I think three or four bucks from China and I have new carbon fiber for that. So I'll just, you know, cut out a new one. I've probably got enough for, I don't know, at least two new, maybe, maybe I could get four uh, new legs out of this. So uh, I just had to go retrieve this piece so I have that little rubber uh, deal there. So. Anyway, I'm doing lots of talking, trying to cover all this, but I think I've hit most of everything that um, is important that you need to know uh, as you're going through builds. And I apologize again uh, profusely. Uh, it takes me a lot longer to build things than most people. Uh, and sometimes I get them built and it takes me a lot longer to get the videos done uh, because I have a lot of little projects happening at once. So those of you that are starting to build and they're following the videos and trying to get as much information as you can, I hated to leave you hanging for this long. So that's why I'm kind of giving you the update. 
So if you do have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to help you. Uh, a lot of you guys have been emailing me or sending me uh, messages. That's fine. Uh, however you can get a hold of me, uh, I'll be happy to help you what I can. Um, but as you can see, I'm to the point where it's definitely flyable. You've seen the flights, but I've got the finish work to do. But uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.